Diabolical Tales. Starring Jack Ferguson in another exciting story of dangerous intrigue, fantastic adventure, and sinister circumstance. Diabolical Tales. based on the actual experiences and authentic records of the government man known only as Special Agent X-132, who for many years has investigated the otherwise unexplainable. Here is our star, Jack Ferguson, as X-132. My name is not important, but you can call me Special Agent X-132, or just X-132. I work on an above top secret project called the Enigma Files. This is my story. In a moment, listen for Jack Ferguson as X-132, Government Man. But first, a word from our sponsor. Ripple X Vodka. Made from only the finest American ingredients. When you buy Triple X Vodka, you're not only supporting superior American-style capitalism simply by picking it up from our competitors on those upper shelves, you're also helping to stop the spread of red communist aggression. That's right. That's because Triple X Vodka donates 2% of all profit to pro-democracy movements against existing communist regimes in Europe, Asia, Africa, and South America. Triple X Vodka. In this friendly, freedom-loving land of ours, Triple X Vodka conforms to American ideals. You'd better enjoy it. And now, Diabolical Tales. This above top secret report from the Enigma Files is marked The Washington Flap. Washington, D.C., July 1952. The capital city of the United States government. And its usual serene peace and tranquility has been thrown into an upheaval of fear and uncertainty as the past several days has witnessed mass sightings of strange, unidentified flying objects appearing in the skies over our nation's most important buildings and landmarks. Around 9 p.m. on the night of July 26th, Reporters and photographers scrambled in an attempt to get into the radar control tower of Washington National Airport, which was tracking several more UFOs after a close call with a National Airlines flight. Look, there's six of them now. Harry! I see them, Bob. Looks like they're fanning out towards Andrews Air Force Base. Somebody better get them on the horn right now. Harry, I don't believe this. There's nine now. Where are they coming from? Say what gives. I specifically said no reporters. I'm not a reporter. Well, who are you then? My name is not important. I work for the Special Projects Division of the United States Army. And I'm here to let you know this situation is now under control. Under control? Look, buddy, we've got nine, now 11. Unidentified incomings less than four miles south from the White House. Well, first off, are you guys even sure you're reading that thing right? Because I don't see any unidentified flying objects on that radar. And what do you call that, G-Man? Well, it's hard to say for certain, but I'd guess temperature inversions are causing some sort of radar mirage, which is what we're seeing here. Yeah, it's typically ground lights reflected in the sky under freak atmospheric conditions. A naval radar specialist and some Air Force brass will be stopping by shortly to check in on you. I don't want to sound threatening to you, gentlemen, but I'd highly recommend you, uh, not speak to the press. It's a measure of national defense. Uh, y yes sir. As I told Harry there, my name is not important, but you can call me Special Agent X-132. We're just X-132. I work on projects classified above top secret. 
At present, I'm assigned to investigate UFO sightings and encounters. Tonight, and on July 19th, 1952, a week ago now, there have been mass sightings of UFOs around Washington, D.C., so I've been pretty busy. I was about to go back to the Pentagon to file my report when I realized I should call home and let my wife know I would be late. What number, please? Operator, Underhill, 75309, please. Hello, Davis Residence. Diane, it's me. Could you please stop answering the phone using your maiden name? It's my professional name. I never know when publishers might call. I don't want to confuse them. Are you going to be late again? Yeah, a lot of work to do. Don't wait up. You know I won't. Whoa, sorry. What was that? It's Dave, our neighbor. He stopped by for some sugar. Pass on my regards. I will. See you later. I'm sure I've told you about her. Her name was Diane Davis. We've been married about six years, and she was waiting for me at home once I got back from these crazy overtime hours. She was always waiting for me, if you know what I mean. I'd loved her long before I ever returned home from the war. I found her waiting for me in Times Square, New York City. She was holding a little American flag and a big smile. Sure, now she smokes with a 12-inch cigarette holder, never cleans the house, and spends nearly all her time writing what she calls beat poetry that I would never understand. But that didn't mean I didn't love her. She had published a novel called I Bleed about three years ago, based on her experiences randomly hitchhiking across the country during the war. (laughs) I feel like I barely know her anymore. I was driving southeast on 1st Street when I noticed some activity ahead in the streets in front of the U.S. Capitol building. You heard that right. It was a trio of UFOs flying maybe a thousand feet above my car, and now they were over the Capitol building. (sighs) This is going to make a real mess of my night. I parked, got out of my car, and went to work. This involved pulling out my badge and holding it high as I waded into the crowd. Come on, folks. Nothing to see here. What's that? What are you, nuts? Those are flying saucers. Is it the communists? No, no, those aren't flying saucers. The uh, Air Force launched a bunch of weather balloons today. Well, there they are. (gasps) Somebody's piloting that thing. It just flipped over. It's definitely a flying saucer. Yeah, those are the new models. Weather balloons. Weather balloons? Come on, people. Break it up. Go on home. Fortunately, they all started moving on, except one. I noticed him because he was wearing a long black cloak. He didn't move. After a few beats, I started to slowly approach him. The mysterious man wore a hood that covered his head. He stood with his back to me. Hey there, guy. Maybe you should take off that hood and hear what I say. Get out of here. Go home. The man slowly turned around and faced me. He was wearing dark tinted glasses, but most of his features were hidden by his cloak hood. He stared at me for a good ten seconds with an absolute impartial expression. Almost as if I was a bug he could just squash if he felt like it. He didn't seem threatened by me at all. I looked up only long enough to see those UFOs take off and then turned back to see the man had disappeared. I looked in both directions. Nothing. I started walking back to my car when I finally spotted him a good three blocks away, just as he disappeared into an alley. I broke into a run to try to catch up. As soon as I turned into the alley, I froze. He was just standing there at the end of the alley, watching me. For maybe another ten seconds, neither one of us moved. 
And then I drew my standard issue M1911 sidearm and took aim at this strange man dressed in black. That's when I noticed he had something pointed at me, like a... I quickly ducked and took cover behind a dumpster as the blast hit some trash cans behind me. Something like a bolt of lightning came blasting out of whatever he was aiming at me. After catching my breath, I jumped to my feet and aimed down the alley. But he was already gone, disappeared. And that's when I suddenly remembered... Man in a Black Cape. The Tibet mission in 1939 with a similar lightning bolt beam weapon. These supposed underground creatures, these men from within the earth and their advanced technology had somehow made their way onto the streets of the capital city of the United States of America. We'll be back with Special Agent X-132 in Diabolical Tales after a word from our sponsor. Hey there, big fella. I see you looking at me. But I have to tell you, I can see that receding hairline and the bald spot. But don't let it bother you, lover. Because now there's debonair hair bigger for men. And it's a special blend of alcohol, water, coloring, and some other secret ingredients that will slowly exercise your scalp, help stimulate those blood vessels, and coax those shrunken hair roots to regrow. <sighs> Guaranteed. So grab a bottle of debonair hair vigor for men, and then give me a call, Tiger. And now, we're back with Jack Ferguson as G-Man Special Agent X-132 in Diabolical Tales, The Enigma Files. There I was, my office in the Pentagon, filing my report two hours after a strange incident involving a mysterious man dressed in black who fired a ray gun at me before disappearing into the night. I need to do some research. X-132! They're picking up more UFOs! This time hovering over in the White House! You're not even looking up from your file! Aren't you going out? Uh, they're just buzzing us. It's a pressure tactic to get their detainees from the crashes since 1947. It's already being negotiated. Don't worry about it. I'm going to the atom bomb shelter. Close the door on your way out, chum. I had managed to locate some of Dr. Ernst Schaefer's Nazi-era evidence from their 1939 Tibet expedition. It's the same batch of research papers we recovered as part of Operation Paperclip at the end of the war in 1945. Agartha was the name of a legendary ancient underground civilization that possessed superior technologies and unknown power. Historically, many other cultures had made references to these underground dwellers, and the Nazis took it seriously enough to send Dr. Schaefer to Tibet in search of a cave entrance to this mythical underground realm. Schaefer wasn't able to find the entrance, but our American team, that consisted of General Burton, my mentor Special Agent X-13 and I, along with some army support, had been shadowing the Nazi team. We did encounter one of these strange beings, and it had left several members of our team dead. What Dr. Schaefer's research revealed were many strange and ominous things. The lightning beam weapons were called electro incinerators. These beings possessed a near stealth-like movement, wore all black, had a serious aversion to sunlight and bright artificial lighting, and had names that tended to start with a Z. Scary stuff. Their suspected origins are a revelation for humanity, but mankind should never know of them, these men from within the Earth. X-132 here. Burton here, X-132. General Burton, I was just about to call you. There's been an incident. I'll meet you down in the Signal Corps labs. They've got something for us. The Signal Corps? But I've got something unrelated to the UFOs. So is this X-132. I'll meet you down there in five minutes. Something unrelated to the UFOs at the U.S. Signal Corps office. Huh. I picked up my research papers and got to move on. The Pentagon is a big building. As I made my way into the Signal Corps office, I saw General Burton had brought eh, an old friend. X-132, glad you could join us. You remember Dr. Robinson? Of course, General. Hello, Doctor. 
I'm surprised you have the time for this with all that's been going on. I'm sure that I could say the same for you, Special Agent X-132. So it's a situation. The Signal Corps had field agents out attempting to catch communications between the UFOs. One of the receivers was dropped and was facing down towards the ground when we intercepted this message. Go ahead and play it. That was some kind of stereoscopic transmission. Stereoscopic? Audio and some kind of 3D visual information. It's too advanced for our machines to break down. That make any sense to you, X-132? Right down to the Z names, General. Uh, can I have a word? (sighs) If this is about your past work on those Nazi agarthophiles... Just a moment, Doctor. Please. After glaring at me silently for good... Five seconds, Dr. Robinson walked away. Then I pulled aside General Burton and put him in the know about my encounter with the man in black and how I felt it tied in with the evidence we gathered in Tibet 1939 and Berlin 1945. Do you think these men from within the Earth are in cahoots with the UFOs, X-132? It's too much to be coincidental. I don't know, General Burton, but I do think we should consider them a serious threat and allocate some funds and men to begin investigating them. Not an easy thing to do right now, X-132. We're going to be changing administrations in a few months. Everything depends on who gets it. Also, Dr. Robinson doesn't even seem to think these people are even a real threat at this point. Special Agent X-132? Yeah? They have a phone call for you. For me? Who is it? They said it's your wife. And that's when I remembered. I was going to go straight home before all this man from within the earth nonsense. I followed the tech to the nearest phone. Hello, Diane? You said you were coming home. Yeah, and you said you weren't waiting up. (sighs) Yeah, well, I lied. I've been waiting and you're not here. I'm sorry, Diane, but there's been a lot of things going on around here. It's hard to pull myself away. Look, I need you to come home because I need to talk to you about something. Oh yeah? Everything okay? No, I need to have the talk in person. Can you come home? We're about to go out in the field. As soon as I'm done with the job, I'll be there. Trouble at home? Nothing to be concerned about. General, I'm going to need a crack team of field agents to go out and hunt down this... Zong character. I'll see what I can do. When do you need them? As soon as possible, General Burton. We need to get to work now. The threat this man in black poses to the citizens of the United States of America is far too great. And that was how I discovered the men from within the Earth were active in the United States of America and realized the Nazis were onto something with their Agartha research. And there's more, much more, regarding what happened with Diane. But I'm out of time. And I'll need at least one more cup of joe. This is Jack Ferguson. Some of the stories we bring you are so strange and fantastic that it's hard to believe that it really happened. For obvious reasons, some of the names, dates, and localities have been changed. But our stories are based on the real-life experiences of Special Agent X-132, G-Man. And they did happen here. We hope you'll join us again next time for another adventure. Until then, remember folks, the men from within the Earth are among us. This episode of the Diabolical Tales Radio Hour starred Jack Ferguson, Kyle Stroud, Don Garrett, Troy Sterling Neese, Christian Wheeler, Dan Jeremy Brooks, Steve DeMonico, Heather Wheeler, 
Kim Elcorn, Emily Wheeler, Brandon Kane, and Brianna McDowell as Diane Davis. The original score was by Troy Sterling Neese. The mix was by Dan Jeremy Brooks of Apocalypse Cow Studios. It was written by Brandon Kane and produced by Christian Wheeler, Troy Sterling Neese, Don Guerin, and Dan Jeremy Brooks. The Diabolical Tales Radio Hour is presented by Cosmic Control Productions.